Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Keelan and in today's video, we're going to go ahead and create this 3D website header you see right here. Now these are really trendy and so me and you, yes, me and you right here, right now, we're going to make this together. So if you're interested in learning something new, start up Blender, follow along with me and let's jump right in. Okay, before we get started, I just want to note that I have got a higher resolution monitor now. Um, so I've increased the scale of my general interface just to make sure it was still readable for you in these videos. But if you're having any trouble, let me know and I'll continue to increase my size until it's really easy to, you know, read and it's plenty accessible for you. But okay, so the first thing I'm going to do in this project is to create the sofa that you see in the design. So I'm going to go ahead and keep the starting cube. And the first thing I'm going to do, I think, is just scale it down slightly because the cube is quite large from the get go. And then press SZ to scale it in the Z axis. And we're going to create the bottom part of the sofa here. So S and Y just to scale in the Y axis. However wide you want your sofa to be, you carry on. I just want something average, let's say. I'm going to bring it up. Okay, that looks pretty good. Maybe a little bit wider. Okay, I like that. And then we're going to go ahead and add a loop cut. So let's go ahead and press tab into edit mode, control R to get our loop cut tool and then come near the center here, click. And I'm just going to move it back to say around here, click. And this is going to be the back of the sofa that we extrude up. But I also need some arms. So I'm going to press control R again to get our loop tool back up. Shift. Oh, not shift, I mean scroll your mouse wheel up just to increase the amount of cuts to two, then click and then right click to keep this perfectly centered. And now what we need to do is press two to go into edge select mode. And I'm going to select both these loops by holding alt and shift, which will select the entirety of the loop and the same over here. And now what we can do is press S and Y to scale this up across the Y axis. And then you can see here now we've sort of got this outline of where the sofa is going to be. And then I'm going to press three to come into face select mode, select all the outer faces here, then press EZ, extrude this up. Um, actually, I'm going to bring it to around here and then select the back of the sofa and then again to continue extruding up the back here. Okay. That looks pretty good to me. And then what we need to do is give this a bit of smoothness because right now we've got the good general shape, but it looks a bit pointy. Am I right? I wouldn't want to sit on that with you. <laughs> so let's go ahead and click on our object, come into our modifiers and add a subdivision surface modifier. Now you can see we've got a lot more geometry. It's really smoothed everything over and it's, I still wouldn't want to sit in it quite yet. So let's go ahead and increase of your report by two, increase the render quality. And now we can, you know, work with this, add some more loop cuts and create a bit more geometry and more shape. So tap back into edit mode because you can see when we add a subdivision service modifier, you lose a lot of the shape where it's trying to smooth everything over. So what I'm going to do is press control R towards the center here, then move your mouse wheel up to create two cuts like we did before. Click, right click. And just like we did last time, I'm going to press S, Y to scale. And the more cuts you add into certain areas and move them along, you'll, oh, whoops, went too far there, undo that, S, Y. You'll keep that geometry. Cool. And all we need to do really is to keep going around into all these different areas and add in more loop cuts to create more of a distinct shape. So if I come down here, I can see this very rounded. I want a flatter surface here. So I just press Control R. Move, move my mouse over till I get a nice line across the entirety of the center here and then click and then move this up and down till you're satisfied with the general shape. I want it quite flat so I'm going to bring it closer to the edge and click. And this is the general basis of modeling with the subdivision surface modifier. You see it used, you know, as a technique in many different models and today we're going to use it for the sofa. So let's carry on doing this. I'm going to do the same up here. Just to stiffen out the back, maybe control R here, bring this across. Uh, we could do the same again on the other side, bring it across, make it a bit more, more squared off. That's looking cool. I want to keep those like that. Uh, do you know what? I think that'll do for the purpose of this tutorial. 
I'm pretty satisfied. So now I'm gonna right click, shade smooth. Now we've got this really smooth looking surface. And what does a sofa need? I think a sofa needs some cushions. Otherwise it's gonna be like sitting on a block of wood. So let's go ahead and press shift A. And I'm just gonna start with a cube. Scale this down because it is huge. Bring this forward and then scale it on the Z axis. Bring it down and then SY to bring this out. And now all we need to do is to start smoothing this thing over. We're also gonna use the subdivision surface modifier again to get a nice cushion shape. Okay, so to start off smoothing this over, like I said, let's add a subdivision surface modifier. And then you probably think, Keelan, what have you done to my cushion? What is that? Well, <laughs> let's add some extra loop cuts, right? So control R, I'm gonna add three, right click, and then maybe add two here, right click, and already we've got a nice cushion looking shape. And let's increase our viewport to three and add a bit more of a, I don't know, a sort of shape to this. So perhaps what we can do is we press three, click on both these faces, right click, poke faces, and then press one to go into vertex select mode. Select both of these, G, Z to bring these down. I know you can't see inside it right now, so I'm just gonna click and then Alt Z to go into X-ray mode. And then perhaps press Control Shift B, which is going to bevel our vertex. Make sure you're pressing Control Shift B, not just Control B, because that won't work for a vertex. And then perhaps you could either, you could probably extrude this up a little bit. Uh, that, yeah, that's kind of cool. I like that, that's interesting. Then you can right click Shade Smooth, and all of a sudden you've got an, a nice looking cushion. Love it. So if you go back at the top view, uh, what I wanna do now is just to move this around, scale it up till it fits. Cause you can either do like a two cushion sofa or three. Hey, I'm not judging. I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna have two like big cushions. Let's sit inside there a little bit. Perhaps make them a little less tall. Uh, let's go into the right view here so I can see what I'm working with. I'm just gonna line them up. Shift D to duplicate, Y to lock to the Y axis. Bring this across and then I think around there, there will do. And would you look at that? We've got nice two cushions. But what about the back? Well, I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate this. So control uh, Shift D, sorry. Z to lock to the Z axis. I'm gonna go into front view so I can see from the side here. And then I'm gonna press R and Y to rotate on the Y axis. Bring it over to the back. I know it's huge. I'm gonna actually shrink this down so that it's like a three cushion sofa from the from the back. And let's go into here. Just move this along and then Shift D. If you want it to be exact, you can use Y. Shift D, Y. And then we have three cushions. Would you look at that? That's looking pretty cool to me. All right, and if you wanted to, of course, you could tinker with this as much as you like, maybe bring them a bit further into the sofa, play around with the shape, you know, make something a little less symmetrical, because, you know, when everything's really symmetrical, it can make it look quite unrealistic, but I'm not really going for a realistic sofa in this. I'm going for like a nice stylized, smooth-looked one. And yeah, so let's go ahead and I think I'm going to add a another cushion, just to go on the sides. So just like we did before, add another cube, scale it down, SC, scale it on the Z axis, and then add a subdivision surface modifier. Go ahead and I think I'll just right click subdivide. That looks good. And then let's go ahead and bevel this here. So remember control shift B to, to bevel a vertex. And then let's I to inset this, move this down to create just a nice shape. And this is just gonna be like a side cushion to, to sit on the side, maybe scale it up. And then I'm gonna press shift Z, which will scale it up on all axes except the Z axis, just to make it a bit wider. And maybe slim him down slightly. Perhaps I'm gonna press two to go in edge select mode, hold alt, select this middle edge, perhaps scale this up. 
Okay, I'm gonna double tap R, play around with the rotation, right click shade smooth, move it over to one side. And remember, I'm not going for a realistic sofa here. That's not what I'm going for. If you want a realistic sofa, I'd recommend Blender Guru. I like stylized pretty things to go with my web design and web application project. Cool, would you look at that? I think that's a pretty looking sofa. Would I buy it in my house? I don't know, but I like it nonetheless. <laughs> okay, so what else do we need? I think we need some legs. So all we need to do for that is if you hold shift and right click, we're gonna move the 3D cursor to the base of the sofa here. And I'm just gonna double check that I am recording. Cool, that's looking good. And then let's go ahead and press shift A and adding add in a cylinder and whoa that's a big old leg so scale this down use an s there and i think what i'm going to do is you i'm going to go into edit mode on this cylinder press 3 to select this lower face gz to bring this down and then s to scale down this face to get like a nice you know thinned out leg here and I'm gonna go into my front view mode here well rather the right currently apparently GY just to get like a nice angle okay that looks good to me might want to make this slightly bigger bring it up slightly and it's a bit far out there so how is how's that looking cool and of course we don't want to have to remodel this for all four corners. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna come into modifiers, add a mirror modifier, then come to the prepare tool here, the selector, select the sofa, and you can see it's already mirroring across the X axis. And all we need to do is click Y, and all of a sudden we've got four legs on our sofa. Would you look at that? I love it, it's pretty, and I hope you do too. So now let's start doing the rest of the scene, eh? So let's do Shift S, cursor to world origin i'm gonna zoom out i'm gonna do shift a add a mesh i'm gonna add a plane s to scale up the plane how big do we want it perhaps there that looks good to me tab into edit mode two to select edges select these two outer edges easy bring this up and it's time to add some color and stuff so let's go into our shader material view up here so let's come into our material properties on our sofa and i'm just going to call this pink whoop cap locks is always on why is cap locks always on pink and then go to cut base color and let's give this a nice pink and if you want to play around with your hdris the ones that are built in feel free um, i find that the ones that are quite bright and white tend to be the ones that are more reflective of what the final product is like. Remember, it's not going to quite look like this because, you know, this is the, you know, pre you know materials preview. It's not the rendered preview. So um, that looks good. It's a bit shiny. So everything to get like a soft look, I tend to increase the roughness, which tends to prevent it from shining so much. And it'll stop that light reflecting and just make things a bit more softer. Because when things are soft, they don't shimmer and shine and okay so let's add some color to the legs i'm just gonna call it leg and the wood tends to be like a very light orangey brownie color maybe like that give it like a 0.7 roughness i don't want that to be too rough either cool i might actually increase the scale of these let me just um quickly isolate that by pressing forward slash and I'm just going to click on this top face here. It's easy to bring it down slightly. Forward slash to bring back the sofa. And just to bring it down slightly. Okay, cool. That's just me being fussy. You don't need to do that. Okay, so let's do the rest of the sofa. I'm going to click on the cushion. Drop down pink because you've already got pink. And the same for the other ones. Whoops, I clicked no there. So I'll click on it, materials, drop down, pink. And that's a nice pink sofa. In terms of colors of the little cushions, I'm going to make this like a light blue. 
So move it up into the blue slightly. That's an, uh, just a nice color that complements the pink. I think that's pretty. Once again, increase the roughness. Uh, maybe around 0.6 there. I kind of like where it's shining slightly. It's got like a nice uh, you can see the indent, indent quite nicely there, so I'm just gonna, yeah, I like that. That looks cool. And then we can do the same again over here. What colour did I make this? I think it was like a yellow. And I'm gonna go drift into the yellow here. Ooh, I like that. 0.6 roughness as well. And that is looking very nice. I like it. And now, what colour was the rest of the scene? Um, I think I had like a white floor or like an off white floor with a blue wall. So I'm just going to click on our backdrop, press tab to go into edit mode. And firstly, let's give it a blue base. Blue. And I think I went for like a nice deep blue. Maybe up here somewhere. That's quite nice. And then I'm going to click uh, on this bottom face. Make sure you're in face select mode. Press plus. I'm just going to do white. And then make sure you click assign and that's gonna make sure that this bottom face is oh well i didn't select this so click this click white click assign there we go now it's actually selected cool and maybe drift this slightly to the blues only only ever so slightly just to give it a slight off white color that looks good to me and then let's go ahead and jump into our rendered view okay and this is where you can play around with your settings a couple of things i like to do to make them really pop in color and vibrancy is to come into our uh, scene here now you can either do this in ev or cycles i'll show you my ev settings i like to turn on ambient occlusion this just sort of adds a bit more darkness to those shadows you can you see you see that kicking in there beautiful just to make it a little bit more realistic say then I like to come all the way down to color management, go to look, and I, I tend to put on high contrast, and that really makes the colors, you know, boom, boom, shakalaka, boom, boom. That looks really nice. I love it. So now it's just a case of playing around with your general styles, uh, your lighting. I'm going to increase the roughness on our back walls around point eight. They're shining a bit much for me. And then, so to sort of set it up, for a you know a website so you have to think about the dimensions of your camera so if you click on the little camera button here and then we come over to our uh, output properties this is 1920 by 1080 that's full hd i like that for the initial website header so i'm going to keep that for now then i'm going to press n view lock camera to view and then just set this up imagine you was looking at your website right here you'd have your header up here, uh, maybe some text, call to action buttons. And what I had with that one was I had the sofa to one side. I left a space here to put in like a little video module and then enough room across the top here where the backdrop is, where the blue is, to contrast nicely and create an option for a header. So I'm going to put that around here. I think that looks good. Then make sure you come back up here to turn off the locked camera view because the last thing you want to do is to start moving your camera around and you've ruined your camera position. And now let's add some more lighting. So I want a nice top down light here to really just add a nice little bit of shadow to the base of our sofa. So I'm gonna do shift A and I'm gonna add a area light. And then I'm gonna press GZ to bring this up. And then I'm gonna press S twice just to scale this up and then come into all the light properties down here. I wanna give this a lighting power of around 800 and that really brightens it up you can see we're getting a bit of shadow flicker here but don't worry too much about that that's going to disappear as soon as we jump into cycles so if i click on my camera here just to look at the journal layout tell what i'm also going to do too i'm going to click on our backdrop press g x just to move this along and i'm going to make it so that the back line of the wall just sits underneath the sofa here and then g y Bring it over this way slightly because I like a nice bit of overlay. GZ, oh, not GZ, sorry, GX. Bring us this way because this just adds some nice overlapping elements and don't have a perfect line on the backdrop there. So I think that looks good to me. And then what we can go ahead and do is this light over here, 
it's creating a lot of dark shadows over here so just like a basic three point lighting setup click on the light here for shift D bring this over here just to brighten this side right now it's far too bright because all this light over here is designed to do is to brighten the shadows so I'm going to bring this down to say let's try 400 because we really want it to only complement it and brighten up those shadows you see that might, that might even be too bright again so perhaps 200 okay I like that looks good so now let's say we wanted to jump into cycles and this is where the magic starts to happen so up here go down to cycles now how quickly this occurs and how quickly this thing will render is completely down to your device but as a preview check this out okay you can see it's looking really good and you've got this beautiful soft looking sofa here and this is a nice layout for a nice backdrop for a web page so i'm going to go into so you can see device here i've got set to gpu that's just going to make sure that your graphics card or your integrated graphics is really going to be processing this because it's this is what it's designed for it's designed for these high graphic images your cpu is going to have a much harder time but if you've only got a cpu in there don't worry just use your cpu too and then the next step is just press F12 or come up to render and click render image. I'm gonna fast forward this bit because it could take some time but I'll see you back in just a moment. All right this is looking really nice I think this stylized sofa came out looking really nice the colors are really vibrant shadows down here are probably a little bit dark so you might want to play around with your lighting till you get something you're happy with but for the purpose of this tutorial I'm gonna keep this how it is but where do we go from here so now we've got our nice render how do I use it so what you have to do next is come up to here this image tab and just do save as and you can stick it wherever you want it I'm just gonna put it on the desktop here I've also got a lot of other things um, but I'm gonna do I'm just gonna call this sofa backdrop and then I'm gonna click save as and then what we're gonna do from there I'm gonna jump on into Figma now where we're gonna finish up this design and sh we're gonna have a basic design prototype of a website header so let's jump on into Figma Okay, so we made it. We're now in Figma and all we need to do is import our image file that we rendered into a design of your choice. This is just a basic mock-up of a website I've already had in the background ready just to save some time. It looks strange right now, but wait till we import an image. So all we need to do is to go where you've saved your image. If I go to my desktop here and then click and drag this into Figma. I'm going to bring this over and center it up and in your layers panel just make sure you bring your sofa down so it's behind every other element in the interface and then of course you can go ahead and scale this up to and adjust to your preference and realign till you get something that you're happy with and I think that looks pretty good to me so there we have it. This is how I include 3D renders in my websites. I will be doing more of this in the future. I'll show you how to include 3D models with transparent backgrounds and some other interesting effects. But on that note, my name is Minkila and I hope you've enjoyed this video today and I hope it's been insightful for you. If you've enjoyed, like and sub, it's always appreciated for a lowly YouTuber down here. But until next time, ha Alexa, stop. <laughs> but until next time, have a good day and I'll catch you in the next one. Ladies. <laughs>